Hey folks, this is Meredith from the Papery Craftery. Today I'm going to be sharing another summery flower. I'm going to be making some three-dimensional quilling orchids. And these are pretty simplified flowers. They're just going to be three colors. I have some white quilling paper, I have some yellow, kind of a palish yellow, and then I also have a kind of a rose type color. It's almost a coral. I'm going to be using my ruler because we're going to need different strips in different sizes. I do have a work board in case I need that later. Any kind of tool will work for you. If you have an automatic or a battery operated quilling tool, that's great. Mine's sort of on the fritz, so I'm not going to be using it for this video. You will need both Elmer's glue and tacky glue if you have that. If not, I would just do the tacky glue for this project and pins are going to be helpful as well when we start forming our flower towards the end. The first thing I'm going to show for this orchid is going to be the main body of the flower and again being a really simplified version of an orchid these are just going to be all white. First what I'm going to do is I'm going to take about 50 inches of quilling paper so that's more or less two of these 24 inch strips. I know that's only 48, but for simplicity's sake, we're going to just do two of these. Like I said, somewhere around 50 inches. And to make this strip as long as I need it to, I tore off the ends to get nice smooth edges and I'm going to apply a little bit of glue and just very carefully sandwich them together. Just very slightly overlap. And after that gets to dry for just a moment, I'm going to roll this up in a tight coil from end to end. This is where one of those battery operated quilling tools will come in really handy because you can just zip it right up and it just takes a second. Again, mine was being, being goofy when I was making these. So we're going to do it the, the manual way. And if you're like me, after a while, it gets a little hard to keep these lined up on your quilling tool. So go ahead and do it as far as you can until it starts to get a little wobbly and then don't be afraid to do it by hand. That is totally okay. It will take a couple extra seconds but it's definitely easier than fighting with those coils while you're trying to roll them. Once you get all the way to the end, you're going to apply a little bit of glue and get that to set so this coil doesn't open up at all. And then we're going to turn it into a teardrop by pinching one side. And you're actually going to need three of those in the same size. So three strips that are more or less 50 inches. Roll them up into a tight coil and then give them a good pinch on one side to make a teardrop. This next part I jumped ahead just a little bit just so I wouldn't be redundant. I ended up making two more tight coils. These are larger. These are about 80 inches. So I ended up using four strips of that 24 inch paper, more or less 80 inches. If you want to be right on be right on. It, it really doesn't matter too much for this project as long as these are bigger leaves. After making those into the tight coils, I'm going to dome them very slightly by just pushing on the inside with my finger a little bit and then I will turn that into a teardrop as well. So you can see in the back there it's just a slight dome. I didn't use a mold or anything, just my thumb. But I want to make sure that this shape that I like stays, so I'm going to apply a little bit of white glue and then 
I forgot to mention a um, paintbrush would be handy for this part in my description of supplies in the beginning. So when you find yourself lacking a paintbrush, just use your fingers. It'll work out just fine. Don't forget to do the other coil in the same exact way. A little bit of a dome, a little bit of teardrop, a little bit of glue, and wipe it out to set. After those five petals are made, it's time to go ahead and start forming the body of your orchid. And I came up with this little hack to use one of my cork work boards to start building the flower. And because quilling comes ready made with little holes right in the center of each of these petals, it worked out really well to set the smaller of the five, those three smaller petals in sort of a triangle shape and then they will stay steady while I put the other larger domed flower petals kind of right on top. And it does take a little bit of maneuvering. I ended up deciding that I thought those bottom two petals, they were a little too far apart, so I moved those in again. And then once I'm happy with the placement of the, the little petals, I can go ahead and use some tacky glue on the underside of the larger petals and get the orchid shape that I'm looking for. But it still does take a minute, even with the tacky glue. If you are a fan of using hot glue, that will definitely make this project go even faster, but you won't have as much wiggle room if you decide that your petals aren't exactly where you'd like them. So bear that in mind, whatever glue you're comfortable with, but take the time of, of setting in, into account. Finally, I'm more or less happy with the shape of this orchid. I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry and make the other parts for the inside of the flower out of the yellow and that rose paper. The rest of the flower is made up of some shapes that are pretty similar to what we did with the white. I have two domed teardrops that are both made from 22 inches. And then I have a larger domed teardrop that is made of 33 inches of the rose color. And then this is actually just a dome. I made the tight curl, coil of the yellow in 17 inches, but then I didn't pinch it, I just domed it. These are gonna be the inside of the orchid. You know, orchids always have those those organs inside like any other flower, but they're really bright and distinctive and they kind of come out a bit. That's what we're gonna be building with those different teardrops in that column. And then there's also in an orchid, it almost looks like a, a tongue kind of coming out of the flower. To do this, I took a strip of about six to eight inches of the rose. This one was eight inches, but it ended up being too long. I rolled it up on my needle tool a little more than halfway and then took it off my tool. I do have a long tail going, but I don't wanna let go and let this open up. So what I did was apply a tiny bit of glue right where the tight coil meets the rest of the tail that it's still on. And I'm gonna let that dry for a minute. And this will, this little dot of glue will help it from bouncing open and kind of unraveling. Once the glue has dried so that that coil doesn't unravel, 
I tear the rest of the tail off to about a half inch or so. And then what I did was folded it in half towards the coil, but not completely pinched it all the way down. I want it to kind of be open and then apply a little bit of glue and let that dry as well. So what you're looking for is sort of this capital P shape, capital letter P, but then the stem of that is sort of still open. Again, I didn't, I didn't smush it all the way down so it closed. So that is the shape you're looking for. After the rest of those shapes are made, I grab my tacky glue again and I'm going to start by putting in the inner rose petals of this orchid. Now I put some, some tacky glue right in the center and starting with those little rose colored teardrops. I want them to sort of sit up a tiny bit inside of those larger white petals. And because everything's sort of a dome shape, they do kind of sandwich in there pretty nicely. I also put in that larger uh, domed teardrop, that inner petal down there as well. Like that. Again, if you have to move everything around, you will have some wiggle room with tacky glue to get everything where you like it. Once all of those rose inner petals were set where I liked them, I went ahead and put a tiny bit of tacky glue on the end of that swirled piece and kind of just tucked that so it went up and over towards the top of the orchid. And I'm also going to put the column, which is that yellow dome, that is going to go right in the center. And once I get that there, push it down gently, it's going to kind of help everything just kind of perk up and sit nice and straight in there. And that is it for this orchid. Like I said, it was super simplified and it really will go pretty quickly because it's only just a few pieces. They're just long strips, so that's nothing to be afraid of. You can do that. When you're putting this together, you can make this a truly three-dimensional craft by gluing a few orchids on a piece of wire, uh, floral wire. I did that with these. I made three of the same exact orchid with bits of wire that's wrapped with floral tape and I also made some little flower buds. If you want to see exactly how I made this, it is all written up in the original post which I will link here and I will also link in the description box down below. And that'll also have all of your information on the lengths of these strips and all the shapes that I used in case you missed any of that. So don't forget to check that out as well. As usual, leave any comments or questions down below. I hope that you like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I will see you then. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.